purpose of this video is to discuss the concept of the normal curve and its relation to probability. The normal curve is a concept that's foundational for descriptive and inferential statistics, so it's worth knowing well. When we measure variables such as height, scores on the research test, IQ scores, and plot them on a graph, the data resembles the shape of a bell. We call this the normal curve because data collected from normal situations when plotted on a graph forms this curve. After repeated testing, statisticians have found that if the data are normal, in other words, there's no huge numbers of really high or really low scores, then most people's scores will fall in the middle. For example, with height, most of us are average. The number of fairly short or fairly tall people are few, and the number of really short or really tall people are fewer still. If we were to measure the height of everyone in our class and plot it on the chart, the scores would likely resemble the normal curve. If we calculated the mean for height for our class, the score would fall right in the middle of the curve. This means that 50% of the scores plotted on the graph will fall under the mean, and 50% will fall above. In other words, half the class is shorter than average, and half are taller. Remember that. If you think of all the scores on the normal curve running from 0 to 100%, the mean is the 50%, or the halfway mark. Let's keep using height as an example. Statisticians have calculated that if our height was plotted on a graph, most of us, 68% of the population in fact, would have a score that falls within plus one or minus one standard deviation from the mean. That makes sense. Most of us are average or near to average height. Almost everyone, 95% of the population in fact, have a height that would fall plus or minus two standard deviations from the mean. Very, very few of us would have a height that would fall plus or minus three standard deviations from the mean. These people would be out at the extreme ends of the normal curve. They'd be the very shortest or very tallest of the class. I'd like you now to turn to page 139 in your Salkind textbook to a graph of the normal curve to assist you with the following examples. The mean score on this graph is a score right in the middle, 100 and the text tells us the standard deviation is 10. Let's say that the teacher tells Jenna that she got 110 on the test. What does that mean to Jenna? Well, if the mean test score is 100 and the standard deviation is 10, this means that Jenna's score is one standard deviation above the mean. This tells us some important things, including where Jenna stands relative to everyone else in the class. So for example, if Jenna has a score of 110, how many people have a mark that is lower than Jenna's? To determine this, follow these steps. Number one, find Jenna's score on the chart. Her score was 110, one standard deviation above the mean. Second step, how many students are below? Well, we said 50% of the class will always have a score below the mean, and then, as we see from the chart, from the mean to the plus one standard deviation point, we add on another 34% of the class. We see Jenna's score is higher than 84% of the class. If someone tells you that you got a mark, or you have an IQ score, or your height, or your weight, and so on, is plus one standard deviation above the mean, it will always mean that 84% of the scores are less than yours. You can see that if you know the average and the standard deviation, you can tell where any score lies in relation to other scores. Let's do another example. Sarla got a score of 80 on the same test, where the mean was 100 and the standard deviation was 10. Let's find Sarla's score on the chart. How many standard deviations is she below the mean? Remember the standard deviation here is 10. Well, we can see from the chart she has two standard deviations below the mean. How many people got a mark that was worse than Sarla's? Maybe you want to pause the video for a second and work that out. The answer is just over 2%. Let's try one more. Anya gets a score of 120 on the same test. Remember that the mean is 100 and the standard deviation is 10. Where is Anya on the normal curve? How many standard deviations is she above the mean? She's two standard deviations above the mean. What percentage of people did she do better than? Pause the video for a moment and work that out. She did better than 97% of the class. And how do we get that? 
by adding up all the scores under the mean, remember that's 50, then we added on 34 and then 13.5 to make 97.5%. She did better than 97.5% of the class. The other very important information we get from this is that getting a score like Anya's, a score that's very, very high, is very unusual. The chance or the probability of getting that score is very low. The probability is calculated by subtracting the individual score in percentage from 100. So 100 minus 97.5 for Anya is 2.5. So the odds of getting Anya's score is just 2.5%. This means that the chance of getting such a high mark is just 2.5 in 100. Let's try one more. What are the odds of getting a score that's plus one standard deviation above the mean? Plus one standard deviation above the mean means that 84% of the scores were less than yours. So we calculate 100% minus 84% equals 16%. The odds of getting that mark are 16 in 100. We're going to see that the same applies with statistical tests. If we plot the result of a statistical test on a graph and the result appears far out in the tails of the normal curve, the odds of, this, of getting this result are so unusual that we say we have a statistically significant finding. But more on that later. And that's why the normal curve is so important. It helps us determine where people stand in relation to others and it helps us determine if the results of a statistical test are significant. So to quickly recap, when scores are plotted on the normal curve, the mean divides the chart. 50% of the scores fall below the mean and 50% above. If we know the mean and the standard deviation, we can plot anyone's score on the chart, and that tells us how they did in relation to everyone else, and it tells us the probability of getting that score. So I hope that was helpful and we'll continue with this in another video.